And uh, as I sat down below uh, listening to Ryan, I said, oh crap. I have to follow a Medal of Honor winner that is also a really good speaker, so well done. <laughs> well, um, I'm unique. Um, not many university presidents are veterans. And uh, as Jared Lyon pointed out, he thinks that at the 200 or so uh, research universities across the country, maybe there are three, and four, three or four of those. So I'm a little bit unique in that I am a veteran. I served for six years, then 20 years as a reservist. Um, and from that dual vantage point, really one of my deep felt heart responsibilities is to advocate for you in higher education. Um, but you really are superstars. Uh, when they open up the SVA campus down, uh, just down the hallway in a little bit, I want you to notice something. Look who is there. You see top universities there, like Ivy League schools, recruiting you to graduate school. You see top companies there, like Raytheon and Amazon. And you have to ask yourself, why? They're here because they know you are top performers. At our school and across the nation, student veterans have higher GPAs, better graduation rates, and higher job placement rates. It's a consistent statistic. You are top performers. And you're also very important to the future, soon. We are about to enter into a period in this country where we have a talent crisis. Right now, 10,000 baby boomers a year are retiring. But after the 2007 economic meltdown in America, the Great Recession, the U.S. birth rate dropped dramatically as well. You add 17 years, 18 years to 2007, and you have 2025. In 2025, this country will begin to experience a 20% drop in college-eligible high school graduates. And in 2029, add four years, this country will experience a 20% drop in college graduates. It will be a crisis for companies and for cities across America. How we, we, will we compete with other countries with much higher birth rates like China? Well, you are the young talent that is key in that factor. Um, tomorrow, I actually co-present with our mayor of Tulsa on this exact uh, subject. You as veterans are the top of the list as far as sought after young talent because your performance is excellent, but also something less recognized, less apparent outside of the military sometimes. And it's your experiences in inclusion and diversity and your strength in diversion and inclusiveness. Organizations, companies, and universities seek a diverse and inclusive workforce because they know their companies are more creative and they're more accurate to the needs of customers, all their customers, when they are diverse and inclusive. It is in these areas of diversity and inclusion that we need to tell our stories as veterans in a much louder fashion. Veterans have seen and experienced the world, lived in places, cultures, languages, customers, foods, and religions, and were able to adapt and understand and work in new and difficult environments. And our veterans are a highly diverse and inclusive group. I saw this firsthand my first days of active duty. It was July 23rd, 1992. Desert Storm was just coming down a little bit. I was age 30. I was a newly minted captain and flight surgeon who did not know how to march or salute correctly because I was a physician. Um, <laughs> but I was handed a new team of 50 in the 28th medical group in that flight surgeon's office. And immediately what I saw across that 50 individuals was a diverse group as far as education and rank. We were MDs and PhDs and social workers and bachelor's degrees and associate degrees and high school degrees. We were captains and lieutenants and tech sergeants and first sergeants and staff sergeants and airmen. We were diverse in race. We were black and Hispanic and Native American, Pacific Asian and white. And we were diverse as far as where we were from, from the plains of North Dakota, from growing up on Indian reservations, from the Marshall Islands, from Panama, from Mississippi, New York, and military brats as well. And it was the best four years of my career as far as teamwork. This team could do anything, and they could do anything because they were diverse. It was a superstar team. We could handle hostage situations, stalking, suicide, standoffs, and much more. We knew each other, we knew our strengths, we worked it, and it, was, it changed my life forever. At the University of Tulsa, where I'm the president right now, we like to say that we're developing T-shaped students. The vertical part of that T is really the depth of expertise that we're trying to train you with your major. Maybe it's computer sciences, or cybersecurity, or law, or nursing, or medicine, but it's your major. But the horizontal part of that T is the breadth of skills that we want you to have as you enter the workforce. And it's where our veterans shine. 
you're adaptable, your critical thinking, your communication skills, your teamwork, your problem solving skills, your ability to lead and to follow, but also in that horizontal part is your strength and comfort in diversity and inclusion. When I went back to civilian life, I struggled a little bit to translate to non-military members what my experiences were like in the military, particularly in all of those T-shaped, horizontal T-shaped skills that I developed when I was in the military. Make sure you tell your story of your military expense experiences, including diversion and inclusiveness, and your comfort and strength with that when you were in the military. As that talent crisis emerges over the next five or six years, that 20% drop in high school students going to college, you will be part of that solution. You will be part of making our American workforce stronger than ever. Thank you.